Hiking up mountains in the Lake District can be tough. They're just chatting. Let alone the sheer exhaustion you experience when trying to run up them. I'm Harry Morgan. This is a story about mountain running, and you're watching Jog On. Good morning, Jog On crew. I've woken up in the back of the Jog On van this morning in a place known as Rhino's Pass in the Lake District in England. The plan for this morning is to do a kettlebell workout and have some coffee, and then I'll tell you a story about a run that I went on that was nearly six hours long with three GB level athletes running in the mountains and how my quads nearly fell off. My legs are shot. The morning light revealed that we had parked up in a truly glorious spot. I grabbed the kettlebell and began some conditioning. With the morning kettlebell workout done, it's time to make some coffee. So, about that run. It all begins with inviting along two very high level athletes to join us in the Lake District, Graham Rush and Claire Duck. Both fantastically fast runners on the road, but as I found out during this trip, both of them are part mountain goat. That morning began with us rolling towards our destination, not knowing what was to come. So currently we're driving the Jogon van through an area known as Wastwater in the Lake District. Dramatic scenery with the mountains sloping down into the large body of water. The lake down here is quite substantial. But our gaze was not set on the water, but the skyline and the mountain tops. If you would like to see this running route in more detail, I'll put a link to the Jogon Strava in the description. Feet taped, a final chat, and Graham, Claire, Louise, and myself were off. Less than a mile in, we passed another group out trail running. And then, very suddenly, it all changed. Jogging up the side of Great Gable, the ground rose up before us. Staring upward, it seemed crazy that the others were still running. With the hands pressing hard on the knees, it was utterly absurd that I was already this dead just a couple of kilometers into the run. How are you feeling? I don't remember. Well, I wasn't just the least fit of the group of people, but by far the least fittest. It doesn't matter how much road work you do, there's just no substitute for running up the side of a mountain. Once I'd caught up, we started running again, but my position at the front did not last long. I'm trying to pick my way up this scree path, but my legs, my legs are all but gone already. <laughs> Different level of runners up there. Some final agonizing steps brought me to the others standing on the shoulder of Great Gable. Graham was already planning our next ascent, a scramble up the 802 meter high Kirk Fell. And so up we went. The one I just grabbed was a bit wobbly. Hands and feet were needed, but whatever was runnable, we ran. The scree line slopes dropped away below us as it leveled out and the pace once again picked up. Leaping from rocks to patches of rough grass, I gave chase to Claire and Graham, who seemed to float along this landscape as if they were jogging at their local park. Dramatic fell running, he says walking. Drops away down the edge there. Our route led us to a rock-strewn gully, which required a careful descent. The sound of falling scree nearby served as a reminder that we should get to safer ground. That was crazy. We met a man with a horn being chased as part of a university fell running game. His thighs looked like they had been hewn from the same rock on which he was now standing. Lower down, we passed another competitor of this horn blowing lake hunt running game. Running up a ridge line towards the summit of Pillar. I tried to ignore the dull ache in my legs and continued to press on across the landscape. Hi guys, are incredibly, in nearly two hours of running, we've only run seven kilometers. <laughs> That's some slow minute mile right there. Look at this view though. Hours into an already desperately tough run, I was amazed to hear Claire and Graham still having a pleasant chin wag. They're just chatting, just having a conversation, running up a mountain. On the flatter terrain, I found I, I sort of get away with it up to a point, but then you get to this angle of slope and the heart rate just rockets. It's just very hard to really maintain any kind of running form. Those guys, no issues. Up to another summit. The Lake District might be beautiful, but it sure is a killer to run around. Breathing hard, another fell run, and before I could begin to question life choices too much, we paused for lunch. For a moment, I thought Graham might be planning a route down next. I was wrong. Now we head up along that ridge line, up towards the clouds. Let's go. Usually this would still be a horrible hill, but compared to what we've been up, 9.5k is probably the first time we've got some nice squidgy grass and a muddy trail in comparison to the rocks we were traversing. This feels quite nice. Okay, Louise? Yeah, this is much nicer. Yeah, it is. 10 kilometers done in two hours and 35 minutes. I'd noticed that Graham had a way of dancing across the ground. I tried this light-footed approach to less success. 
We pause to survey our final hurdle, rising 2,000 feet into the Lake District air, U Barrow. The initial climb was more hands and feet before the watch read 13 kilometers done and a cairn was in sight. I'm guessing that's just the top up there. We're on that ridge line now, that's good. Scarfell just coming into view there as the cloud starts to lift a little. I just checked, according to my watch, by the end of this I'll have burnt just over two and a half thousand calories, which is quite a bit for a run. A final push to our last cairn of the day and I was quickly becoming aware that I was absolutely shattered. The inexperienced may think that the nice part is running downhill. It isn't. I've just paused for a moment because I can't really film and down climb safely. Uh, this has been absolutely mad. So we make our way back down into the valley. Here we go. With U Barrow rising up behind us, each step aggravated the quads. And that is the 10 mile mark. All right, I'm going as fast as I can. Finally, some flatter path down by the river that leads us down to the road by the lake that runs us back to the van where there's squash. I took over a litre on this run, but it still doesn't seem to have been enough. <laughs> <laughs> My legs are dead. Our solution was to freeze them up in the cold of wast water. I waded back out, the leg pain numbed, and ran along the road back to the car park, aware of the alien feeling tarmac beneath. Who's that as the marker? We were back. That was 19.03 kilometers. I'm dead. After six hours in the mountains and a moving time of four hours and 46 minutes, it had been great to share this beautiful landscape with some truly superb runners. This run had served as a stark reminder of the toughness of places like the Lake District and the requirement of decent lung capacity to really experience this scenery and the less accessible areas of our natural world. I hope to get out to the fells again soon. They are calling. I'm Harry Morgan. Go for that mountain run. And this is Jogon.